Thank you, Richard. Uh, so as uh, Richard said, my name is uh, Peter. Uh, so I am the coordinator of the Engineering Bridge programs at Camosun College. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about our programs first and then we'll open it up for questions at the end. Uh, so to start off with, uh, the Engineering Bridge programs are located in uh, uh, Victoria, BC. Uh, so at Camosun College, we have two separate campuses. Uh, so there's a, a Lansdowne campus, which is uh, more urban. And then there's the interurban campus, which is a bit more rural. It's uh, spread out a little bit more from the city center and uh, spread out in uh, over a, a lot more uh, land. Uh, now it's the interurban campus where our technology and the bridge programs operate out of. Uh, also operating out of the interurban campus is the uh, business trades and we've got a brand new health science building uh, where most of the health sciences have now been moved to. Uh, at the other campus, at the Lansdowne campus, uh, general arts and science courses, and there are still a few health programs that are left uh, at that campus as well. Uh, Camosun College is uh, quite a bit smaller than what you're used to with uh, SATE. Uh, we have a total of about 12,000 learners that are registered uh, uh, in a variety of degree, diploma, certificate programs, and, and trade programs as well. Uh, the pictures you see here are of the interurban campus. Now, what is the Engineering Bridge Program? Uh, so the Engineering Bridge Program is designed to take students that have graduated from a technology diploma. Uh, and uh, the key is that it has to be accredited diploma. So accredited by the Technology Accreditation Board or TAC. Uh, and uh, obviously related to one of the areas where we have a bridge program. Uh, so the, the idea here is that we take students that have already got two years of engineering behind them and we bridge them to a point where they can enter into third year at university. Uh, now, there is a little bit of a difference between a technology program and an engineering program. Technology programs are much more applied and they're much more hands on. Uh, whereas engineering programs at the universities tend to be a lot more theoretical based. Uh, so when you take a look at the courses that you have in your first two years at a technology program, there is actually some overlap of courses that you will see again in third and fourth year university. Uh, but those courses are often taught at a higher level, often involving higher level math, so calculus. Uh, and then of course, there are some courses that students who go through university in the first two years get that a typical technology student doesn't get. Uh, so the goal of the bridge program is to kind of bridge that gap, is to take the courses that you haven't had from the first two years of university um, or courses that you might not have had to, in sufficient depth and add a little bit more detail to that so that by the time you come out of the bridge program, the university considers that you are equivalent to a third year uh, university student. Right? So in other words, they consider that the education of the two-year technology program plus the bridge program to be equivalent to the first two years of university. It's not directly equal. It's not a course by course transfer. Uh, in fact, we operate on what's called a block transfer basis. So where they take that, that two years technology plus the bridge program and they block transfer that to be equivalent to the first two years of university. Now our bridge programs will bridge to the University of Victoria as well as the University of British Columbia. Uh, now, so you guys are all uh, electrical related fields. I'm gonna be focusing more on the University of Victoria because our electrical bridge program only uh, bridges to UVic. And of course, this is a, a, a program that's recognized across Canada as an excellent transition option. Uh, in fact, this is only one of two major routes that you can use to advance your education beyond the technology program. Uh, the other major one is Lakehead University. They offer a bridge program as well that operates in the uh, summer right before the start of third year. Uh, so it's a similar program. Uh, we are the only college-based institution that operates a bridge program like this. Uh, and uh, there is also BCIT, which is kind of a, a separate side case because they do a two-year technology program and then they do an additional two years for a degree program, but they don't have their own bridge program and they don't generally accept students outside of BCIT. Uh, so as I mentioned, the, the program objective is to fill in the gaps. Uh, so what you've got in the technology diploma is advanced skills. Uh, so they, they're typically applied skills. So for example, you spend lots of time doing a, computer work and uh, hands-on with the software and going through and doing the calculations. 
And uh, what you don't get from that two years in the technology program uh, is going to be uh, advanced mathematics, uh, some additional physics, and sometimes some exposure to other engineering disciplines. One of the things we see is that uh, in any engineering program, regardless of the discipline, uh, there is a set of core competencies that every engineering graduate has to have. And, and basically that means that everyone has to understand a little bit of each branch of engineering. So, uh, you know, civil engineering students will have to do electronics, electronics engineering students will have to do chemistry and so on. Uh, so you find a lot of those other courses built into our bridge program as well. And, uh, and then of course, once you get out of there, you into the third year of an accredited degree program. Now the program is uh, interested uh, or has a lot of interest drum students because it uh, provides a pathway to uh, expand their education beyond the technology program. Uh, and with that ed additional education, you get the opportunity for greater responsibility of work. Uh, and that usually comes along with a higher salary. And then also the ability to pursue a PNG designation. So PNG is your professional engineering designation uh, through a professional association. Each province has their own professional association. Um, and uh, after you graduate from an engineering degree program, you're able to work as what's called an EIT or an engineer in training. Uh, so that's a minimum of four years on the job under the supervision of a professional engineer, at which time you're able to write the professional practice exam uh, and register as a PNG. Uh, once you get that PNG, then you're really um, capable of handling more responsibility and, uh, and your salary goes up with that. Now, the universities that we deal with, uh, so again, UVic and UBC, uh, they are very interested in our program because it allows them to operate more efficiently. Uh, so when they take in students into first year of the program, they recognize that a number of those students are not gonna be successful for whatever reason. Some of them just drop out, some of them fail out, some of them decide that engineering is not for them or what have you. And by the time they get to third year, they've lost a significant number of those students, but they still have capacity in their program to handle those students. So what our bridge program does is provide an alternate pathway or an alternate mechanism of feeding students into the third year uh, to make the, the universities better able to utilize the capacity that they already have. Uh, colleges are very supportive of this program, not just our college, but uh, obviously, uh, you know, SAIT in helping to set up this presentation. Uh, their main goal is to support the graduates of their colleges. Uh, and that doesn't mean necessarily just going out and uh, finding a job, but it means being able to support you in advanced education and uh, other options to be able to take your career in the direction that best suits your needs. Uh, and of course, industry is very, very interested in the graduates of our Technology Bridge program. Uh, one of the reasons is obviously they get an opportunity to retrain employees. So sometimes they get uh, people that have graduated from a technology program, they're hired as a technologist, uh, they're working for a couple of years and they recognize the potential and they say, we'd like you to go back and get an engineering degree. Uh, so the bridge program provides a, a mechanism for, the, for them to do that. Uh, another great value to the industry uh, is they recognize the practical hands-on skills that come from a technology program. And I hear this from employers time and time again. If they're looking to hire a brand new engineering graduate and they've got two candidates that they're considering, one that went th straight through university and another one who went through technology first and then bridged and then completed their engineering degree, they're gonna go with the technology background every time. Uh, and the reason for that is those additional hands-on skills that you get in the technology program that the university students just don't get. Uh, what that means for the employer is that uh, someone who goes through this route is, uh, uh, requires less on-the-job training and the employer can get them uh, doing productive work much sooner than they can a university grad that requires a little bit more training on the job uh, before they can develop those hands-on skills. Uh, so as I mentioned, we do have uh, relationships to UBC and UVic. The timing for the two programs is a little bit different. Uh, for the UBC programs, they start in September and go till April. Uh, then you have the summer off and then it transfers to UBC in September. The UVic bridge programs, they start in January. There's a four month sem uh, semester. Then there's a summer semester that's off. There's no courses that run over the summer. Then they come back and complete the second semester in December and then they transfer over to UVic in January. 
Uh, and the reason why the UVic stream is uh, delayed versus the UBC stream is because UVic is a mandatory co-op program. Uh, so it is necessary to complete a minimum amount of co-op work terms at UVic in order to graduate from their engineering program. And uh, one of the things that we've done with our bridge program, uh, in addition to uh, uh, time it to fit in with when their third year starts, which is January rather than September, is we've built in an opportunity for you to complete a co-op work term. So that summer term then, uh, you complete your first term in January, that summer term is an opportunity to complete a co-op work term. Um, and of course, if you've already got a co-op work term that you've uh, completed as part of your technology program, that can transfer over as well. As long as you have at least one work term to transfer over, then that simplifies the process once you get to UVic. Uh, of course, you can transfer to UVic without any co-op work terms, but that means that you have to make up the full minimum requirement while you're at UVic, and that can extend the time it takes for you to complete the program. Now the admission requirements for the program, uh, as I mentioned, a completion of an accredited technology program. Uh, we rank students based on a nine point GPA scale. Uh, so we need your overall cumulative GPA in the two year technology program to be a minimum of five. Uh, I say minimum because some years when we have lots of graduates from technology programs applying to the bridge program, the minimum to get in is actually quite a bit higher than that. Uh, we rank the students based on their GPA and working with the universities, uh, the universities are the ones who have the final say, but uh, we basically give the top X number of students uh, a, a seat in the program. So if we have lots of applicants, uh, it might be more of a B plus or even an A minus that's necessary to get in. Um, having said that, the last couple of years, uh, we have not quite been filling the programs. Uh, we have in some areas, uh, so civil, for example, is full up, but uh, uh, electrical, there is, uh, uh, we haven't quite filled it up. We have 40 seats available. We'll get to that in a minute uh, at uh, UVic. And uh, we typically have about 35 students that are qualified that, uh, that get into the electrical program. Uh, so qualified, again, GPA of at least five. And of course, no grades with less than a C. So if you've got a D grade, which uh, can allow you to continue on and graduate from the technology program, uh, the universities won't consider that D grade acceptable. So you would ha then have to go back and, uh, and retake that course uh, to get better than a D. Uh, now, I, I talked a little bit about uh, going back and retaking a course. Uh, sometimes students will look at their overall GPA and say, oh, it's a little bit less than five. You know, is that going to work? Uh, and like I say, it's the universities who have the final say sometimes, depending on, you know, what is driving that, uh, that GPA down, they might let someone through. Um, but generally what we do is recommend that you go back and repeat a couple of courses so that you can get a higher mark and boost your GPA. The problem with that is if you have already graduated from the program, when we calculate the overall GPA, we will look at all of the courses taken up to the point where the diploma is granted. So once that diploma is granted, you can't go back and retake a course in order to upgrade your GPA. You can still go back and retake the course if it's a D in order to prove that you actually know the material, but it's not gonna affect your GPA calculation. Uh, now for the number of applicants, uh, we've got 32 in civil engineering to UBC, 34 in mechanical to UBC, 30 in mechanical to UVic, and as I mentioned, 40 in electrical and computer engineering to UVic. Uh, the application is handled uh, through uh, uh, Apply BC, so it's an online application. Oh, I, have, I didn't actually update this uh, slide here. It says uh, arrange for the submission of two official transcripts. We've actually changed that now to one. One of the things that's happened as a result of our current pandemic is uh, it has accelerated the change in our processes, uh, and we are moving to more of a paperless process. Uh, so normally we would uh, take in two transcripts. One would be for Camosun and then one we would forward on to the university along with the Camosun transcript that you get as part of the bridge program uh, so that they would have a copy of the transcript as well. As we're moving to electronic transcripts now, we're only asking for one transcript. Uh, and even if it's submitted in a paper copy, it'll get scanned, it's stored in our system electronically and it will be submitted to UVic electronically at the end of the day as well. Uh, and the same applies for... Uh, 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 secondary higher or high school transcripts as well. Um, uh, now, the universities do require that they have a transcript of all of the uh, 
uh, institutions that you've attended, high schools and all post-secondary institutions. Uh, they're not looking at those to determine whether or not you failed out or anything like that. Uh, they just need to, to see that as part of their, their procedures. Um, so uh, we do double check that as we go through the application process. <coughs> Excuse me. Now for our application dates for uh, UVic, uh, the application process opens in mid-January, uh, but the application deadline isn't until June 1st. And uh, everyone who applies by June 1st goes through that ranking process. Uh, where we calculate everybody's GPA. Again, it gets converted to a nine point scale depending upon what institution you come from and what scale that institution uses. So it gets converted to a nine point scale and we rank everybody. Uh, and then we meet with the university and uh, the university will go through um, person by person and they'll look at all of the marks, particularly the math marks uh, and uh, decide who they're willing to uh, accept. Uh, so. Uh, it will be opening up in mid-January for the next stream for you, Vic. Uh, again, application deadline, June 1st. And now, to make your way into university, you need to complete all of the courses in the bridge program or get transfer credit for them. Uh, you are allowed to get transfer credit for up to two courses in the bridge program. Uh, and completing a course means a grade of C or better. Now, the universities do allow allow you to repeat a course. Uh, if you end up failing, say, a math course in the bridge program, you can come back and repeat that course the following year. Uh, repeated courses, though, they want to see a C plus the second time through. But basically, as long as you pass every course in the bridge program, uh, then you are guaranteed acceptance into the university. Uh, and that's guaranteed at the third year level. Uh, okay, so at this point, we will open it up for questions. And, uh, you know, if there are any questions that uh, uh, that occur to you after this session, uh, you can always email me. Um, if you send it to endbridge at commotion.ca, that'll go to our office admin uh, assistant. And depending on the question, she might answer it directly or uh, she'll forward it to me to, uh, to deal with. So uh, at that point, let's, uh, 